In the Western culture, there are many wonderful memories that surround Christmas. Is that true? It's a wonderful climax to a long year. But to many, it brings memories of loss. You know, uh, for those of you that lost loved ones, Miss Tony and others, I'm telling you, this season of Christmas without her husband of 50 years, it's a tough season. I know Stacy said when she lost John, the year of firsts was really tough. First Christmas, first Easter, his birthday, their anniversary. But when you get through all of those things, Jesus is still there. And he's still bringing hope and strength to his people. And he wants to bring it to all people. That's why we want to hand out goodies to the homeless. They need some hope. I realize some of them are there on purpose. They choose to be there. But I have found, I, I'm telling you this, when we passed out these the other day, I would say at least half, probably more, had a mental handicap. And so they fall through the cracks. There's no medical help for them. They can go into the hospital, but they can only stay a few days. They're put back out on the street. Nobody to take care of them. And so I'm telling you, we the church can be the church. Is that right? Here in Luke 2, there is one word used twice that I want us to focus on. I think you figured it out. It's called suddenly. Verse 9 says, suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. I'm sure that if we saw something like that, it would be a little scary. And then verse 13, it says, suddenly the angel himself was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God. as they Think about that. Think what a huge announcement this must have been for the Almighty to send all the angels in heaven, armies of angels, to sing. Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace and goodwill toward men. Woo, what an announcement. The word here is an adverb, suddenly, its root word being sudden. In this case, it is used when describing the appearance of angels. Not only did one angel appear, but a multitude showed up all of a sudden. Here's a definition that I copied out of the online dictionary, sudden. Happening without warning, unforeseen. Happening or done without delay, hasty or immediate. Characterized by a sharp change. These are all things that are done suddenly. Expl explanation of suddenly. And here we have the shepherds minding their own business. They're out in the field taking care of sheep. I don't know, for those of you who do not understand uh, the Eastern mindset, the, the Middle Eastern mindset, um, the shepherd was the lowest form of income. They were, if you were in the caste system, they were in the lowest caste. They were looked down upon. Nobody wanted to be with them. And guess who the angel showed up to? Now, the truth is, the Pharisees and all the religious leaders, they should have been aware that they had gone to sleep. And so the angels appear to the shepherds. Now, I understand that these were the sheep that were specifically for the sacrifice that was taking place in Jerusalem at all the feasts. So these were special sheep, but I'm telling you, 
The angels didn't come to the sheep. They came to the shepherd. So these angels appear to the shepherds out of nowhere. Their appearance startles the shepherds, and they have an announcement to make. First, the lone angel, he wasn't the lone ranger, comes and tells them the good news that a Savior has been born. Say, good news. Yes, Pastor, amen, that's good news. Second, the multitude arrive announcing glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, and good will to all mankind. Did you notice that? I am going to tell you this. With these two messages right here, you don't need any other scriptures to understand that God is good all the time. That the bad that is happening in the earth is not God. God has nothing to do with it. The bad and the troubles and the things that insurance blames him for has nothing to do with God. Has everything to do with the God of this world or Satan. He hates humanity. When Adam sinned and turned this all over to Satan, we walk in the consequences of it. But God has been trying to intervene for thousands of years. And on this day, 2,000 years ago, was the greatest announcement that this earth had ever heard or seen since Adam fell. And that was glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth. Goodwill to all men. The new living says to whom he is pleased. I'm telling you, you please your papa. You please God. He loves people. And we have a message of hope for all time. Are you with me this morning? Hallelujah. My point in this, well, let me back up. Let me ask you a question. Were the angels that were appearing and announcing this great news, was it a strange and random act of God? All of a sudden, these angels show up and they're announcing. Was this a, just, a, just a random act of God? You know, caught God on a good day when he was in a good mood? And said, you know, instead of killing a bunch of people, I'm going to send them an angel and sing that I'm happy today. No, nothing of the sort. God planned all along for this to happen. Say, all along. along. Someone need the fans off? Are the fans bothering anybody? Okay, we'll leave it. My point is this. What appears to be a suddenly to us is actually a planned strategy of God. Are you hearing me? What appears to be a suddenly, all of a sudden, (gasps) wow, God moved in and answered a prayer. God did this. God unexpectedly did this for me. Do you know There's nothing unexpected about it on his side. It was planned. Can you say God plans in my life for good things to happen all the time? He does. He does. I I was scrolling through Facebook quickly this morning, and I found someone had posted actually the lady that came out here last time with Kevin, her name's Dixie, she's out of Dallas. And she posted this, she said, it was out of Jeremiah 31, and it was a direct quote of the Father, and he said, I will satisfy the people with my goodness. Ah, I tell you, that ministered to me so much this morning. I will satisfy the people With my goodness. Say goodness. 
Well, pastor, if God is so good, why is there so much trouble in the earth? Well, let me ask you, how many in here have ever done anything wrong? Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. How many in here ever did anything? Did you ever tell a lie? Did anybody in here, have you ever told a lie? Carla raised both hands. <laughs> how about when you were a little, little child? How many of you ever stole something that wasn't yours? Do you know that according to the scriptures, that alone is enough to send you to hell? I remember at five years old, I think it was five, sister, you probably, it might have been four. She, we were together. She warned me not to do it, but I did it anyway. We were over at our neighbors. They had a big country store. Remember what those old stores, stores smelled like, those country stores? You walk in on the wood floor and you hear it creak, weep, weep. And they had, they had two long, uh, I would call it bars. I don't know what else to call it, but it's big glass cases. They were made out of wood. One on each side went way down. And in the one on the left side, as you were walking through them, they had a big bunch of penny candy. How many of you have seen Penny Candy lately? <laughs> and my mom and the store owner, they were back in the back, and they were laughing and visiting. And so I opened the cabinet just a little bit and stuck my hand in, pulled out a piece of bubble gum. My sister said, you better not do that. Nobody will ever find out. And of course, in my four or five-year-old wisdom, when I'm sitting in the car going, <laughs> and my mom says, where did you get that? Silence, you know, silence tells everything. Mm -hmm. I got a whooping when I got home. Had to go in and apologize. All those humiliating things. Did you know that right there was enough to send me to hell? But it was so innocent. It was breaking the law. God said, thou shalt not steal. Do you know that's why he sent Jesus? Because he knew none of us were going to escape. He had to make a way for us to be rescued. Because honestly and truly, it goes back to one man and one woman's choice. They chose to disobey God, Adam and Eve. And because of it, this awful, ugly, horrendous, nasty thing came on the human race. It's called the sin nature. Do you understand? Because you sinned doesn't make you a sinner. You were a sinner by nature, and that caused you to sin. And that nature had to be changed. And there was only one way to it for it to be changed. And that was for a human being who was completely spotless and free from sin and corruption. And that nature that was actually born in them. There was only one way for that to happen. And that was for a human being who did not have that sin nature. And you see... The sin nature is locked in the human DNA. So as far as man is concerned, there was no hope. None. That's why the book of Ephesians says that the human race was, out, was without God and without hope. 
until Jesus came. And the reason why Jesus came, there is a reason why Jesus had to be born of a virgin. The Bible says God himself came upon Mary by the Holy Spirit. And what was conceived in her womb was of God. Oh, pastor, that's gross. Do you know how man became a living soul when God created Adam? He breathed his life into him. That's what he did in this little baby that was formed in the womb. He breathed his life, his nature into this little baby, just like he breathed his life, his nature, into that clump of clay called Adam. And it said, the Bible says, he became a living soul. And so there was, a, there was a baby for the first time ever. The first time ever there was a baby that was sinless, was in its mama's womb. And when he was born, the angels were sent to announce his birth to the human race. Here was the announcement. I'm bringing you hope for the first time. And Jesus came to rescue you and me from a hopeless situation. Say amen. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, it says, But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us. When the right time came. See, it wasn't a suddenly. God had it all planned out. And when everything lined up, then God, when it, when it was the perfect time, you see, uh, had things lined up 2,000 years earlier, then Jesus would have come then. But it took that long to orchestrate and work man. How many of you in here, after you have been born again, you've sinned? There goes Carla's hands again. You know what that's called? That's called using your will to go against God's will. Is that true? Did you know God gave you a free gift and it's called free will? He gave you the right to choose. You can choose to go to heaven. You can choose to receive Jesus. Or you can choose to reject Jesus. And you can choose to go to hell. Well, what if I don't want Jesus, but I don't want hell either? You don't have an option. That's the only two options there are. And God is providing a way. Yeah, but if I become a Christian, do I have to act like those idiots? No, you don't. You can act like yourself. Whatever that is, it doesn't matter. Jesus has come to set us free. Say free. Well, I've never been in bondage. That's what the Pharisees told him. I've never been in bondage to anyone. Except we find out that they make this statement, we got to get rid of this Jesus or Rome's going to come in and take our our nation away and take our positions away. We've never been in bondage to anyone. They were in bondage to Rome. Right behind them. That's exactly right. Getting paid. This, This is just a little... Thing, just to add some impetus to this, do you understand? When Jesus was asked the question, Master, should we pay taxes to Rome? And they were trying to trap him because if Jesus said no, then they were going to turn him into Rome and Rome would see him as a hairy tick and have him crucified. If he said yes, 
then all the people would say, well, this guy's in Rome's pocket. Jesus answered this, bring me a coin. So they carry a coin up there. And he said, whose inscription is on this coin? They said, Caesar's. And he said, render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Render to God what belongs to God. Remember that story? How many of you remember that? Let me see. Okay. Did you know that on that coin where it says it was Caesar on there, it said this, Caesar is God. And those Pharisees had that coin in their pocket. Do you see what Jesus was doing? He was pulling the, hook, the, the rug out from under them. They were going to trap him. He trapped them. I'm here to tell you, the Pharisees should have been the one to receive the announcement of Jesus coming. But instead, it was the shepherds. Why? Because he found access to them. They were looking for the Savior. Are you looking for the Savior? Wise men were too. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, say fully. fully. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they are all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Notice it said, when the day of Pentecost had completely come, a suddenly happened. What is that? That's when God's plan was fully completed. Then the suddenly, what seemed like a suddenly to us, was allowed to come. Here's my point. Many of us in here in 2023 are going to experience some suddenlies. And God says you've been holding on, you've been you've been you've been praying, you've been you've been fasting some of you, I need to. And some of you have been believing and speaking scriptures and you've almost given up. And I'm here to tell you today, 2023 is going to be your year. You're going to see dreams fulfilled. You're going to see things happen in your life that God has planned from the very beginning. Psalm 139, verse 16, it says, God wrote a book about your destiny, your journey. Every detail is in that book. And he wrote it before you were ever conceived in your mother's womb. Matter of fact, we know the scripture said Jesus was crucified before the foundations of the earth were ever laid. This whole plan, everything in here, God God wanted a family so bad. God wanted someone that was like him that he could actually have conversation with. How many of you have pets at home? How many of you have conversations with them? That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. How many of you pretend to be the animal's voice? How many of you found that when your puppy dog is looking in your eyes with those sad eyes as you're eating whatever it is you're eating, they're not really saying words other than, I want some. God needed someone that could talk with him on his level. Are you 
hearing me? He didn't need animals. He didn't need more angels. He needed family that he could enjoy. I don't know about you, but my kids, all my kids are grown. They have kids of their own. And some of their kids are getting up there in years, 17, 18 years old. And I'm telling you, nothing pleases this grandpa's heart more than to sit with my grandchildren and carry on conversation that they can relate to and they can carry on conversation with me that they're going, Dad, you, Grandpa, you're just old school. <laughs> I love sitting down with my children and hearing what's going on in their lives. I love to hear how their children are are acting up and things, and I go, nanny, nanny, boo, boo. <laughs> we prayed. Lord, give them someone just like me. <laughs> I love, I'm telling you, how is that in the human heart? Because it's Papa, it's Father God. He wanted us to be able to sit down and carry on conversation with him. Now, none of us will ever be as smart, of God, as smart as God is. I don't care if you put all the human race together, we still will never be as smart as God. Yet, he humbles himself, and he'll sit down, and he'll visit with us one-on-one. -on -one. And he'll do it every day, every second of the day if you want to do it. Except he might say, you know, you need to quit talking. I need you to go do this. But I've had that happen occasionally. Not too often. Psalm 139, 16, I already quoted it. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Before I'd ever seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. In this season of perpetual hope, I am here to tell you that God has many suddenlies planned for your life, but they only appear to be suddenlies to you. God saw before he ever created you to be what you would need Along your journey, God has provided all the things you're going to need along this journey. Your destiny, I'm telling you, not one of us in this room is living to the full destiny that God has called us to. I saw a post this week, somebody posted on there. They said, it has not entered into the mind of man what God wants to do. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 says that it's a, it's, um, he wants to do things above. Let's see, how does it go? Ask, hope, imagine, or think. He wants to do that for you. That's your God. Well, let it happen. Well, you got to cooperate. I saw another post that I just really loved. It said, you can't be getting your satisfaction from the world and expecting the peace of God in your life. There is a thing called a relationship with our Heavenly Father. There is a reason why there's a relationship. He needs us to visit with Him he wants us to visit with him. He wants to sit down and love on us. He wants us to sit and love on him. One of the things that I heard uh, that, was, that impressed um, Dr. Kevin was he said when he looked up, he couldn't see the face of God, but he said he could see a little bit of the lower part. And he said God had the biggest smile on his face. And he said the warmth and the love that exuded from the throne was overwhelming. There's only one reason why we don't experience that here. Do you understand that? There's no difference in time and space when we come to the things of the Spirit. That's why the Scripture says, come boldly to the throne of grace, that you might receive grace and help in your time of need. Come boldly to the throne. Well, how can we get there? It's probably no, 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 trillion, zillion years away, light years away. No. In the realm of the Spirit, it's right here. A 
And I'm here to tell you, God invites us to have that presence of relationship with him. There's some things that we need to lay aside, some distractions that we need to lay aside. There's some things that is occupying our time. And they're not bad. They're good. But you can hear your papa's voice saying, come spend some time with me. Come visit with me. Even if it's just for a few minutes. Open my word and read of me. It's a perpetual season of hope. The only time I've ever had Father God talk harshly to me was when I was getting ready to make the dumbest decision ever in my life. And he'd been speaking to me about it for a long time. Only time. God loves us with an intensity that we cannot comprehend. In this season of perpetual hope, I'm here to tell you that you have plenty of suddenlies that are coming your way. My goal today is to keep you on the journey that God has determined for you, to let you know that there is a plan filled with hope. It's a glorious one, and in it you will find every blessing God has intended for you. Ephesians 1.3 says this, every spiritual blessing in heaven has been given unto us through Jesus Christ. Well, pastor, what's a spiritual blessing? Healing in your body. Hope, a new job. Is that right? How is that a spiritual blessing? It comes from God. The restored relationships, restored marriage. Do you understand? God has provided these, and he's just itching to get them to you. We just have to cooperate. Stand to your feet. I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to give the, the little short announcement, but I'm going to pray. How many of you, every head bowed, every eye closed, how many of you in here could use an extra dose of hope today? Let me see. Hold those hands up high all over the auditorium. Thank you. I'm going to start with this first one. If you've never received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to offer that to you. Now, as far as I'm concerned, as I look across this crowd, probably everyone in here is born again. But I'm just going to say, if you have not, now's your opportunity. God wants to transform your life in a way that you have never, ever experienced. It's not about being good enough. Because God took care of that in Jesus. We could never be good enough, but God did it through his son so he could have a family. And God's been looking for you. He's wanting to talk to you. He's not interested in, in, in what you have. He's not interested in your cars or your money. Or He's interested in your heart. And I'm here to tell you this morning, this could be the greatest day of your life. If you have never received Jesus, and you would like to receive him, no eyes looking around, if you would like to receive Jesus, would you raise your hand? Is there anybody in here? I just feel this tug in my heart. I'm not going to belabor it. I just want to know, is there anybody? You could have the most wonderful Christmas season. You'll meet a man who walked the shores of Galilee who is still alive and well today. And he said, if you will just open your heart and receive me, my father and I will come in 
to your heart, and we will have friendship together. Is there anybody that would like to receive Jesus this morning? Just raise your hand. Let me see. I'm not trying to embarrass you. Is there anybody looking in the back? Anybody back there? In the middle? Up here in the front? Is there anybody? All right. I'm going to pray for those that are needing a good dose of hope. You better get ready. It's coming. I'm telling you, this is going to be the year of suddenlies. Get ready. Get ready. Father, by the obedience of the Holy Spirit, in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by that precious blood that was spilled on our behalf, I release a supernatural blessing of hope to your people. In this room, angels of the Most High, deliver the hope. We are expecting suddenlies like never before. We thank you the suddenlies are coming our way. We receive them from heaven. Lord, hope in this hour and in this day. Lord, hope when we look at hopeless situations. Hope comes flooding up in the midst of our heart. Lord, we're going to see it with these physical eyes. I release that hope right now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. Now, don't forget, one bag per family in the back row. There